the order of play before we came on air, you know. My name is Ted Edwards. I will not die. I will not die. Well, this winter I'm going to try something that's never been done before. I'm going to go to Africa, to the Sahara Desert, there's the Sahara, to a country called Mali, and cross from there, a town called Arawan, which is here, to Mauritania, a little town called Walata, which is here. This is 350 miles, and I'm going to try and cross it single-handed, on my own, with two camels. Now, all the other explorers have always avoided it, because it's called the empty quarter, there's nothing there, there's no water, Nobody's ever been there, but I think I can do it with just two camels. It was Jeff Moorhouse who inspired me. He crossed uh, the Sahara and missed out this bit, so I thought I'd have a go. The journey's in two parts. Start at uh, Timbuktu, which is in Mali, and go 150 miles north to Arawan, then I turn west, the real crossing of the empty quarter, uh, for 350 miles and uh, end up in Mauritania at a place called Walata. Two pint water bottle insulated with strap. Clean. In. Spur spectacles and case. Right. Rucksack, tin opener, sleeping bag, pan, stove, two packets of solid fuel, spoon, cup, torch, two spare batteries, one spare bulb, beginning and briefing against pain. Beginning? I think my greatest fear is uh, loneliness. I'm a fairly gregarious person and uh, I like the company of people. This will mean uh, being away from all contact with people for anything between 10 days and 3 weeks, which is something I've never done before. And that in itself is, uh, is going to be very, very interesting. Antihistamine weapons. Goodbye, all you British. You're missing all the fun. You burn with a light that is brighter than the sun. Now your life is over, but ours has just begun. Oh, America loves you, thanks a lot. And you'll sing, go Britannia, as you sink beneath the waves. And we'll wave the star-spangled banner o'er your grave for the third and the last time. In defense of Uncle Sam, oh, America loves you, thanks a lot. Here they all are, going to work. I suppose I'm going to work, really. Here's the Timbuktu bus. I'll be in Timbuktu in a few days. I can hardly believe it. Timbuktu. City of mystery. Well, it don't look too mysterious to me. There's dusty streets, there's beggars. The only mystery seems to be uh, how they all manage to live. Oh, 
<laughs> well, here's the tourist bit. This is the house of Major Gordon Lang, the first white man to make it to Timbuktu. He went out the same way I did, and they chopped his head off. I hope they treat me a bit better. Yeah, a good set of teeth on this one. Nice bit of wool there. Yeah, I like the look of this one. It's not a bad home buyer though, that. Yeah, I reckon it's been to Taudeni in uh, and back on the salt uh, trail, they both have. I like the look of that one. Uh, let's have a look at this. Look at your teeth. It's all right. Yeah. yeah, a good set of teeth there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like the look of these two. Come on, but do. قال لك كم؟ تو اثنين لا اثنين ذاك الكلام اللي اللي يقول له ذاك الكلام كم يعني؟ 70 70 70 70 70 يزيد 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 700,000 400,000 400,000 قال لك قال لك قطرصة 80,000 قول لي السعر بالعربية المرود عليه قلت لك اني 80000 ما نبيع بها هي سير هي بريفير تو كيل دي مان ايت ذير ميت اتو سيل دي ويز ذات برايس لا 700 هي سير هي كانوت هي كانوت ميك اني برايس اكسبت ذات 700000 لا هي مست كوم داون نو نو نوت 700 قال لك نقص نقص هي هاف تو كوم داون قول ما نقص لا عندي لا لا ما نقدر نقص اي ويل جو اب تو 500000 لا لا قول له ما نقص he said, okay, now we're going to make it 650. 650? 650. 650. That's the last price. 650. He said, okay, three, 650. He give for a baggage, a saddle for a baggage, and a girba and a saddle also to ride. Okay. I think that's okay. Okay? Okay. okay. Right. All right. 650. Yeah. Yeah, they can talk about it. 650, eh? 650 quid. Yeah. 650 quid, that for two camels. A couple of saddles. Right. Better be alright. That's all there, mate. Right, this is stage one. This is the approach. This is the rehearsal. This is where I test myself and the camels. 150 miles north from Timbuktu to Arawan. Should take me about seven days. It's good to get going. Been a lot of frustration this last two or three weeks. I've even given the camels names. The lead camel, I've sorted out the best lead camel, and uh, I call her the traditionalist because she can't stand motor vehicles. Got a trad for short. And the one at the back, that's Pegasus. Because we found her near the airport. Call it Peggy, naturally. We've been going along about, uh, about three miles an hour, that's Foreign Legion pace. About five kilometres an hour, that's what I aim at. And uh, I've been managing it today, been very good, very good indeed. It's been good terrain, uh, the ground's quite solid, I'm walking through bush all day, we'll have bush for about four days before we hit the desert proper. Well I've got about five kilometres to go now, uh, it's about three miles to the first waterhole, we're sleeping down near there tonight, out under the stars. Oh, this looks like a good place to camp around here. Pity about not having a pint around here. Nice pint of bitter go down a treat right now. Oh, cool. 
Today I was lucky enough to see the Dowdenny salt caravan coming down. Around about a hundred camels. There are four people in charge. Right. Well, a young kid uh, leading them all, about uh, nine years old, nine year old boy. They were in three lines, uh, about uh, upwards of 30 camels in each line. It's loaded down with about uh, 400 weight of rock salt, big slabs uh, alongside them. These two camels of mine were on that salt run previous to me buying them. And uh, apparently they used to do the whole journey, all 500 miles, with a drink at either end. That's how they make their living, a lot of people, on the uh, salt run. Some of the people out here, I wonder how they managed to live at all. I was talking to a guy in a skin tent this morning. Are you French? You know a bit of French? A bit of French, oh, bon, bon. Right. Bon, je n'ai pas français, je suis anglais. Ah, anglais, oui, oui. Anglais, yeah. You reckon they had a few sheep around the place somewhere. It was just a skin tent in the middle of nowhere. His wife was in there, I saw at least four kids. What he was living on, I don't know. I've no idea. It's poverty that, that, such that we're never even considering England. I think we're right up when we're on the dole. <laughs> There's a difference. Good job to hear that. Good job to hear that. Ah, no. Apparently the uh, average yearly earnings in this part of the world is about 30 quid. 30 quid to give a man and his family going for a year. Something worth thinking about. This unchanging world's an illusion For minute by minute its changes are rife The one thing unchanging in all this confusion Is you are my one love, the love of my life No matter how finely Eternity's reckoned In minutes of wonder In moments of strife The first time I saw you I knew in that second That you were my one love The love of my life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the evenings when the sun's gone down. Everything's quiet. Sometimes you can hear the, the camels chewing away or something. The only other thing you can hear is your own noises, your own breathing. The fire crackling away. Have something to eat, sit down there with a cup of tea, perhaps have a fag. And that cup of tea, it's like Holy Communion sometimes. That's really nice. We're seven days out from Timbuktu now. The country around here, it's as barren as the moon. This is the desert proper. There's hardly a blade of grass anywhere. I'm navigating using a map and compass. You've got to be absolutely meticulous on this. But in this heat, it's over a hundred. In this heat, you just don't feel like doing anything. But you've got to, you've got no choice. I'm quite well sunburned on uh, my face. Uh, my nose is coming for some punishment. The worst part, I think, is probably the bases of my legs, my calves. 
are exposed to it all the time. It's just like somebody getting a, a red hot iron and sticking it on your arms and your legs and leaving it there. Other aches and pains seem to have got a bit worse. I'm in the condition now where if I was home and had a job, I'd be good for a fortnight on the sick, I think. I walked all day today because my rear end was a bit uh, rough after riding Peggy all day yesterday. I'm pretty saddle sore. Things like that you just got to put up with. Then you get to the unbearable pain. That's when you can't move the night. Uh, I was all right until last night, until I got off the camels. Uh, but an hour later, I was uh, in unbearable pain. Couldn't move. I was really seized up, really solid. So I had to take some painkillers last night for the first time. If you can imagine a whole day on a horse for the first time in two years, multiply that by the power 10, and you've got some idea of how I feel today. Uh, I'm in a strange, pretty strange environment for a, a European around here, and uh, I'm reaching uh, my own limits. But the people around here just take it in the stride. This is normal to them. Really rough. This morning, uh, I stopped at a, a, an unmarked well. It's unmarked on my map. First of all, and I came across a young lad. He's only about six or seven years old. Rode in on the camel, leapt off. So they set about getting water out of the well. Uh, in our country, a uh, young lad of uh, six or seven, I mean, he's a child, a very small child. Over here, he's a man. He's completely self-reliant, he knows exactly where he's going. He knows how to handle uh, a camel, which is the equivalent of our car, I suppose. You imagine a six-year-old <coughs> leaping into a car and just driving off to see his mates. <laughs> it's virtually the same. A couple of minutes later, uh, Another nomad rolled up from a different direction, with man on his camel. And then between them, they just proceeded to get water out of this well. Insisted that uh, my camels be fed first. That's the hospitality of the desert. That's the way it is. That's the way it has to be, because it's such a hard life. You've got to look after the stranger. You've got to look after every everybody and each other. I just done some miles. Right, really shit. We're going to need a rest, a three days rest, complete rest. Then I think we can do it. I think we can make it. Bonjour! Bonjour! No boozer in town. Eh? No pub. Eh? The pub, the pub, the boozer. The beer. Huh? No? 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 Manchester wasn't marked on it. Arawan was. That's Arawan. It wasn't particularly the village I was coming to anyway. It's just absolutely the jumping point for the uh, empty quarter. I'm on my own now. The film crew's gone away. Got my own camera, my own tape recorder. Well, I'm going to go west for about 200 miles, then south another hundred miles. There's no water. I've got to take all my water with me. I'm going to try to make the trip in 14 days. But to make it in 14 days, I'll really have to push it. I'll have to do about uh, 40 kilometers a day. If the weather stays like it is today, there'll be no problem. Because today it's clouded over completely. First time I've seen it like this. And we actually had some rain earlier on. The heaviest sky I've ever seen in Africa. It's worthy of sulphur, this sky I'm under at present. Oh, look. 
is getting to a lot of and another cur in the world. He got stung by my first scorpion. A bit nasty it was as well. Well, the, the entire right leg was there. Uh, it felt like somebody had just poured red hot fat all over it. Uh, the other setback was uh, sometime during the night, I must have, well, not knocked over a jerry can, but one must have fell over in the soft sand and had a leaky cork. I don't know how much water I lost, but it means that now I'm down to 10 gallons. I'm a bit worried about this, well, concerned more than worried. I think we're, I've got to start thinking of a, of a 20 day crossing now. I said whether the camels will last out, I don't know. But they're in dire straits. They're not going to last much longer. It gets a bit boring after a bit. Your mind wanders, you get to thinking about various things. My mind's been on the Holy Trinity all day. That scrumpy guineas and Boddington's bitter. I think I'll drink my tea before it goes cold. Incidentally, I've been way beyond the point of no return for about three days. So I've got to go on, whatever happens, I must go on. It's ten past twelve. And I'm getting doon happy. This happens in the sun sometimes. Uh, if I see an uphill bit, if I'm not watching what I'm doing, I just head up it. Sometimes your mind wanders to get away from the bloody pain in your bloody body. It's done hard work, this exploration bit. I think exploration is a bit like uh, genius. 10% inspiration, 90% perspiration. I'm sweating like a pig. Another few days like this will finish me, I think. I tried riding Peggy. Finally, she threw me backwards. Landed on my back and I think I might have cracked a couple of ribs. Uh, it's a bit of a problem. I'm, uh, I can hardly walk at present. I'm still winded a bit. I'm dosed up with painkillers, it's still hurting like hell. I'm gonna keep going. I have to do 25 k's a day because in these conditions there's just no way I can make it up the following day. Ah, oh, bloody hell. Just keep going. Ah, she's a bind, she's big and late. This carries on, I might seriously have to think about dumping her. She carries on like this, she's likely to kill us all. And God, it's stinking out. I haven't got much water left, so it's really a, a bit of a race now. I've got about a hundred, well, not much shorter than 200 kilometres to go. About, uh, about four days of water. Just gotta get a move on now. Things are a bit getting a bit desperate with the water. In heat like this, you just gotta drink. I think it's finally dawned on me the possibility that I might not make it. Down to three tea bags. Did you know you can get four cups of tea? Out there? Four cups of tea out of one tea bag. I, can't, I just can't stand one more mishap. One more mishap on, on top of what I've got right now. Just about finished things, I think. I'm really finished. You know, I've, I've got no strength left.
I've got about uh, half a, no, less than half a litre, but a quarter of a litre of water left. And a mouthful. I just stopped on top of a rise and uh, I discovered a clear dune as far as the eye can see. I think I'm a dead man. It's midday. I've done 10 kilometres today. 10 kilometres in the heat. 10 kilometres. I'm 25 kilometres from water. Everybody's finished. Mine isn't finished. I will not die. I will not die. My name is Ted Edwards. I will not die. I will not die. My name, my name is Ted Edwards. Ted Edwards cannot be killed. I will not die. That was Ted's last recording. He'd stopped filming several days earlier. He knew he was near Wallata, but he realized he'd die before reaching the village. Ted refused to give up, and on his 17th day alone, he came across some nomads who gave him water. It saved his life. Ted had survived for three days on less than a pint of water in temperatures of over 120 degrees. And after only a day's rest, he completed the journey unaided. The 350 mile crossing had taken 19 days, a route no one had ever attempted before. When Ted arrived in Wallata, there was little sign his extraordinary journey had nearly cost him his life. Experts in desert survival had said it couldn't be done. Ted Edwards proved them wrong. And when life is done and it's time for my leaving this thing cannot end as if cut with a knife for you will remember in spite of your grieving that you were my one love the love of my life 